Okay, so I've been silent for way too long, and I think it's about time that I came out with another video here. So, uh, since my last computer project, Skittle Bits, I've primarily taken a break, but there has been a project on my mind um, that I've been wanting to work on for a while. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, I've basically been challenged by another YouTuber by the name of eDragon16, or 13, sorry, I keep flipping those, uh, eDragon13, uh, to create a computer that fits in a 40x40x40 40 40 40 area. Uh, I talked about this briefly in my um, <clears throat> uh, build vlogs on Skittlebits, and I mentioned that I wanted to try and make it based off the 8086. Um, <laughs> that was a little bit ambitious, and I'll show you why here in just a sec. So these are all my prototype circuits to try and get these things as small as possible to fit in the area that I need it. <clears throat> uh, this was the first... No, no, sorry, that's the third prototype. The first one is... I can find it. There's Skittle bits over there. Here. So this is just the um, address control unit for this particular project. And you'll notice, um, I, I want to point out basically this um, this has all the registers that the um, 8086 has uh, in terms of uh, vector pointing and stuff like that. And you'll notice that this line here is 40 blocks long and this one's 50. Um, it's it exceeded my my size, so I had to reduce it quite a bit. Uh, and several um, methods for reduction have been implied, but unfortunately, it's still not small enough, um, as you'll see here in a sec. So this is you know, my second to most recent prototype here. Uh, this one is about as as bare bones as I could get, and still can be considered 8086 derived. Um, so what we've got here is we've got the uh, data processing side. <clears throat> which has two registers. It has an accumulator and it has a flag register, and that's it. Um, it doesn't even have a second operand um, register. It actually gets its second operands directly from memory. Um, but then we have the um, address control unit, and this has um, three registers, I believe. Yeah, three registers, um, which is the stack pointer, or the, the program counter stack pointer and base pointer. Uh, and those three are base. Those four or five registers, I guess, are basically the absolute minimum that you can get away with and still have the functionality of the 86. Um, but even that was too big. You'll notice uh, this is the whole thing together, plus a little bit of RAM at the bottom here. Um, that's still too big because I've already pretty much used up all my uh, headspace here, and I don't even have any control circuits in place, which. Uh, I find when it comes to building computers, um, control circuits usually take about half of your um, physical space, and here I've only got maybe a quarter left, so I don't have enough room. So I had to reduce it further, basically. So in, in other words, really, I, I said I was going to try and make it 8086 derived. That's not going to be the case. This is the new uh, design, I guess, sort of. Um, I'll go into the uh, details of everything, but it's it's as bare bones as you can get. Um, we've got the data processing portion of it, which is a very minimalistic ALU, a single accumulator, and a flag register. And I know that sounds exactly the same as the first one, but I understand that the first one actually had um, traces routed so that I could introduce um, data to the flag register immediately, or I could pull what's in the flag register immediately. This is basically just an isolated flag register. Um, pretty much the same as Blue Wave, really. Uh, so I can't manipulate the flag register in any way. The only way I can manipulate it is through um, operations. And then of course the uh, accumulator is pretty much the same. Uh, save for, you know, over there I used um, a little bit more advanced resettable uh, data flip-flops. Here I've just got basic piston memory, which uh, may not work in the next snapshot here. In fact, I think I think I'm in. Yeah, I'm in the snapshot, so I don't know if this will work. Um, I may have to continue working in 1.10 for this to work. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I know they've done, done some changes about uh, quasi-connectivity and um, trans uh, teleportation or whatever the stuff is. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's that. That's uh, been reduced as far as possible, and it is <laughs> ridiculously tiny. Um, if I do say so myself. And then as far as pointer registers are concerned, uh, we've got one register, and that's the program counter. That's it. Um, and like I said, we are literally going as bare minimalist as possible here. 
to get this to work. Um, and just to show you, you know, just how desperate I am to get this thing to fit, uh, understand that I don't usually go for um, separate me memory blocks. I'll usually throw my program stack and data all in RAM. And the reason being is it's a lot more versatile. You can choose where everything goes, just how much of each, you know, memory section uses the total capacity. Like if I want a really large program and a small stack, I can do that. Um, whereas if I use separate program memory, I, you know, I may only use a quarter of my program memory and a quarter of the RAM, and suddenly I've got just a whole bunch of crap left over that I'm never going to use. Um, you, that's primarily the reason why I don't usually go for that, but for this, it seems to be the most logical manner because uh, what it basically means is I can save on a register because now I don't have to port actually I can save on two registers because I don't have to buffer uh, the program counter in order to keep that on the bus um, and I don't have to buffer the instruction um, it also saves on control circuitry because now I don't have to decode everything everything's already kind of encoded um, and yeah so I, I really don't know how else to explain it. It's really just a basic Minecraft computer, the you know run of the mill, the ones that everybody makes with separate program memory, simple architecture. Um, <clears throat> the only difference I would have to say is the control circuitry, and I'll get into that in just a sec. But I want to go over the um, uh, instruction architecture here. Uh, so there are four instructions. Um, but of course there are three operation bits so you can have a total of eight and the reason being is um, basically what we've got is we've got a, a move instruction but that can be subcategorized into four different instructions uh, we've got a control which can be subcategorized into two and then we've got a load immediate and jump and so load immediate and jump basically um, when you load immediate you take the value that's on this bus right here this uh, four bit bus and you move it directly into the accumulator um, jump is where you take the data that's on the 6-bit bus and you put it directly in the program counter. So makes that simple and then control is basically just you know you're either setting or resetting a bit which I'll have um, integrated in the control circuit and um, jump or sorry move is basically just taking what's in the accumulator and either moving it out or moving it in uh, to RAM or IO and so the the two you know this is basically set to zero if you want to move and then this one controls whether it's um, in or out and this one controls if it's IO or memory so I do intend on having um, IO in this computer and wow my frames just dropped holy crap <laughs> there they are okay um, and there's a lag spike yes I, I noticed Mojang hasn't fixed any of the lag spikes much Anyway, uh, so then we have a, a three-bit bus here. This is basically uh, condition control as well as um, operation control. So when you'll notice that none of those op uh, none of those instructions were operations. So what I've done to fix this is actually when you load into the accumulator, so load immediate or load from RAM, uh, you actually don't go directly into the accumulator. You pass through the um, ALU. Um, down here, yeah. So you, you actually go through the B input of the ALU, you pass through the ALU, and then you go into the um, accumulator. So what this means is you can actually do two things. You can load data and you can perform an operation at the same time. So if you're just loading directly, you basically just set the ALU to OR, and then you just load it in. Um, but if you're wanting to do an operation, you can of course load immediate, or you can load from, from RAM. Perform the operation using the operation bits. Um, and then the result will then get stored in the accumulator. Now, of course, when it comes to jump, that's conditional, so we've got these three lines here for conditions, which basically select uh, one of the condition flags. Uh, so two bits select the flag, um, <coughs> one bit inverts it, and if the um, result is true, the condition, er, <coughs> excuse me, the, the jump will uh, be performed. If it's false, it will be ignored and it will proceed on. Um, and of course, two bits selecting the flag means I can have up to four flags, but I only have three. Um, this is, again, the most minimalistic that I can get away with here. Uh, so we have carry, we have zero, and we have sign. And then the fourth flag is uh, basically always on. So if you select it, your condition is true no matter what, unless you negate it, in which case it's always false. So yeah, that's basically a way of uh, overriding conditional jumps um, without 
necessarily needing to set flags or anything like that. Uh, and yeah, so that's basically what I've got so far. Um, as far as layout's concerned, I'm still trying to figure all that out, trying to get it, you know, nice and compact, squeeze it into a nice small area where I still have access to a whole bunch of stuff, and yeah, all that stuff. But uh, then as far as control's concerned, typically what I'll do when it comes to computers is um, I'll use combination logic to actually control everything, which works, but it can get extremely overwhelming very, very quickly. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen the schematics and the um, circuitry for Skittle bits that controls everything. And I've, even that one, I try to make as simple as possible, and it's just overwhelmingly complex. I don't fully understand what goes on in it, but uh, basically I found another technique that um, you can be used to control things like these, like computers and such, that's actually really simple, and I'm surprised I've never heard of something like this before, but this is basically a finite state machine. Uh, and so what it is, is you basically, um, you send in your, your clock pulse down here, and that pulses, um, or that briefly enables a register, um, and the register will basically get its next state from this lookup table back here, and then once it gets its next state, it'll send it back into the lookup table, um, and so what ends up happening is you can actually um, get it to, to jump to different states depending on conditions uh, that are also given to the lookup table. So it's a little bit complicated, but uh, basically if, you know, let's say I, I want the, um, let's say I want the, the, the machine to, to jump between state 0 and state 1, I can do that, and if I want you know, if weight is enabled, I want it to jump to state 2 and then go back to state 0. Um, I can do that simply by, you know, putting in uh, address 0, state 1, address 1, state 0, and then address 0 with weight on address 2. And so every time you clock that, it'll it'll perform that uh, that sequence. Um, so it's it's it sounds a little complicated, I know, but hopefully, you know, the more I use this thing in the uh, computer, the more I explain it, the more it'll make sense. But the uh, point is, it's a really powerful circuit, and I kind of wish I'd knew, known of this sooner, because it, you know, this is basically it. This is my control circuit right here, minus a few extra peripheral circuits. Um, and it's pretty small, extremely simple, and easy to implement. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but then, yeah, as far as actual uh, assembly of the computer, I haven't really done that yet because, like I said, I'm still trying to figure out the layout of everything because I need to put this in such a manner that I have access to the accumulator, but I can also port it to external or internal peripherals, I.O. and RAM. So, yeah, that's a small challenge that I need to figure out before I can start putting all this together. But I figured I'd at least tell you, you know, that progress is being made and, you know, just show you what's up so far. So yeah, that said, hopefully you enjoyed. Um, oh, and before I go, I should probably mention uh, what I'm going to name this computer, because um, I named my last one pretty early in the process because of the uh, fact that it had the rainbow bus. I had decided to call it Skittle Bits, so I figured, you know, may as well name this one early as well. Um, and I figured, what's the biggest, um, biggest feature that is uh, noticeable on this computer? And that would be the fact that it's in a cube. Um, and so I, I kind of got thinking, you know, what's, what computer is in a cube-like shape? And then that's when I remembered Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <clears throat> so I basically decided to name this computer uh, Deep Thought, <laughs> based on or uh, after the the computer from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the one that is designed to create or calculate the answer to life, the universe, and everything itself, and eventually. The question itself, <laughs> if that makes sense. If you watched or read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Otherwise, just give it a quick Google search, you know, Deep Thought, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But yeah, that's what I decided to, to call it, is uh, Deep Thought. Yeah, so that said, that's all I've got for you. I'll be sure to uh, post another video when I've made some more uh, progress on Deep Thought here. And that said, I will see you guys in the next video.